Hello and welcome back to the Wellness Check. Today's video is about a question that I get a lot and it is, how do I know if something is traumatizing to me or not? How do I know if a life event that I've been through has traumatized me or if I just have thoughts and feelings about it? What is the difference? And I will say that no matter what life event, significant life event we go through, whether it was traumatizing or not, can and often does change us. We, we, walked, we walk away from these events a changed person in one way or another, but that doesn't necessarily mean with, that we've been traumatized. So today I wanted to kind of go through what trauma looks like having come away from a life event. And I'm not going to be specific to a life event because it can literally be anything. It does not have to be you were in combat in a war. It does not have to be you lost a loved one. It does not have to be what we call these big T traumas in order to be traumatized. It can take on a lot of different shapes and forms. And there are categories to the side of trauma that can be even more impacting than trauma itself, such as like um, childhood wounds, childhood neglect from parents, attachment style, attachment wounds. Technically, we can't really call those traumas. Those are wounds. It's a whole thing. But those could even be more damaging psychologically and in our relationships and how we feel about ourselves and what we would consider in textbook manner what trauma is. So this is an interesting fact that I love to share with people and the experts in the neuroscience field when it comes to merging psychology and neuroscience, we're looking at the, the tie between those two, they say that it takes about three months for an individual's mind and brain to process something that has been pretty catastrophic, something that is um, overwhelming, sad, bad, frightening, uh, traumatic, any of those big words, something that we, we face as human beings, three months for our brain to really consolidate that. And our brain will consolidate it in one of two ways. It will either go through all of the processing layers and kind of what we call file itself into the part of the brain that files it and puts it away and says that was then this is now it's over we're safe we're well we can be okay or there's interruptions in that filing process that then that memory and those emotions and the core beliefs around that get stuck and they get stuck in the limbic system part of the brain which is the core center part of our brain it's our emotion center, it's our fight flight, um, adrenaline part of our brain. And when things get stuck there, they cause interruptions and challenges in our lives. So if you've heard people use language like, I was so triggered by this person or by that thing or by that sound, that's how we know there's a potential interruption. Something might have gotten stuck in terms of how we filed it away. So it goes in one of those two directions. And as a trauma therapist, this is part of our job to really kind of get a lot of detail about how long ago did this happen? How have you been feeling since this incident happened? Um, we're looking at helping the client identify which way the processing is going. And there are things that we can do to help that processing. There are things that we can do to hurt that processing. And then part of it is just up to the biology. Some of it can even be spontaneous of how your brain is going to process it. So lots of psychoeducation around here. So if it happened in less than three months, technically treatment could look a little different. If something is very recent and it's a overwhelming, tragic, sad, bad, overwhelming kind of event, and the brain hasn't had the three months to really do its magic with that, then what I'm doing as a therapist and what we do as trauma therapists is try to help that processing speed itself along. So we're doing things like we're asking the client to maybe talk about it with us, with their friends, to journal about it. The more the, the prefrontal cortex is involved in speaking about it and feeling about it and being with trusted individuals to share the experience and maybe not feel so alone in it, 
to write it down if that doesn't feel like a safe option to talk to other people the more processing is happening so we we kind of encourage people to practice the skill of tell us what happened share your thoughts and feelings how it's impacted you how can we get you back out into the world again because that is helping the mind engage the right areas in order to help things move along as they should if the incident has been more than three months maybe it was six months ago maybe it was 16 years ago then treatment looks a little bit different because now it's very evident can we see uh, did this person was this person able to process it right was it was he or she not able to process it right where are we stuck and how is it interrupting this person's life so if we know someone has experienced trauma and feels traumatized by it if they I'm gonna give you some just kind of pointers here if they have avoidance maybe they have an avoidance of that person people that look or remind them of that person Maybe they're avoiding a vicinity, like a part of town or a specific building or restaurant where near or where that happened. Um, So lots of avoidance and the thought of going into that or near to that causes a lot of anxiety. We know that there is traumatization if that person has very intense flashbacks or images that kind of spontaneously come to their mind and then make them feel really either agitated or fearful or um, overwhelmed, frozen. And these images almost, as they come up, they're, they're spontaneous. They impact the person's moment, maybe even the day. It's hard to concentrate. Maybe they're in a funk or a fog. Um, and you can just tell something's a little off. And if you were with this person all day, you, you would say, well, what's happened? I don't understand. Like, why, why are you feeling that way? And it's because of this very internal process of how they're remembering things and what it feels like to remember it. So we have um, avoidance. We have flashbacks and intrusions slash nightmares about the incident. Nightmares are, are a whole other thing that I can do an entirely different video on. But the more repetitive the nightmares are with the same content, same content, same picture. To me, that depicts more of a traumatization versus lots of different nightmares over here and over here and over here and over here that are seemingly unrelated. Take with that what you will. Uh, Avoidance, flashbacks, nightmares, um, disruptions in relationships. This doesn't happen every time. But someone who is traumatized who hasn't been able to really start working on it yet, um, they tend to have disruptions in their relationships with loved ones, family members, spouses, friends, developing social anxieties, pulling back, um, those types of things. So they'll often come into the office with relationship issues. And that's really just the tip of the iceberg. What we need to do is dig deeper into why and how. And a big hallmark like point of this is the negative core beliefs, which you've heard me talk about a lot. Negative core beliefs are things that we believe about ourselves in a negative way uh, because of what we went through. This is one of the most important, in my opinion, is what is the makeup of a person's uh, positive core belief and negative core belief. And once we kind of gauge what a person's belief system is, like what that person is made of and how they feel about themselves and how they feel in the world around them, that has a ton to say about the experiences they've had and the impact it's had on them. For instance, a negative core belief could be, um, I'm in danger, I'm no good, I should have done better. Um, I can't safely express or show my emotions. I can't let it out. That, that's just a, a couple of them, right? Um, and oftentimes we are living with these negative core beliefs. Sometimes they're very loud and we feel them intensely throughout the day. And sometimes they're kind of unconscious and they're just brimming right under the water. And our mind is telling us this, these things, these negative things that we believe about ourselves, but it doesn't feel very like a conscious thought. It just is something in the background that's true of us and we feel way we feel about our intuition. Can I trust people's judgment? Can I trust my own judgment? 
um, kind of looking over the back shoulder, like what's the next bad thing that's going to happen? Because when things are good, I can't trust that. When is the next bad thing going to happen? Hypervigilance is what we call that. Um, and other just kind of interactions with the world around us and our own body, mind, and soul based on how we feel about ourselves. So something I do with all of my clients is I get a really good feeling of what the positive core beliefs are and what the negative core beliefs are. And typically people can pick from both, which is great. But maybe one list is longer than the other list. And so we go back and we say, okay, how long has this been a truth of yours? How long have you felt like this? Is this a childhood thing or did this happen more recently? And we can actually begin to pinpoint where did these negative core beliefs come from? How has it impacted you? Are you having nightmares? Are you avoiding things? Are you having issues in relationships? And the whole, the whole picture begins to become very clear. And now we can say, okay, this technically is traumatization. And that's not a bad thing. Look at all the work we've done here. And if you know me and if you know trauma therapy, there's so much we can do to heal that and move forward. So it's not a bad news. It's not a sentencing of any sort. It's, oh my gosh, I'm not crazy. Or, oh my gosh, I'm not like permanently damaged. Or, oh my gosh, nothing's wrong with me. This is an impact of something that I went through. Now the next step is the healing and the processing and the trauma therapy. So in a nutshell, <laughs> as concise as I can make it, because I could go on and on about this, how do we know if someone is traumatized? Well, we look at the three month mark. We, we look at how is this pers person processing it before the three month and how is this person processing it after the three month mark. And we look for these signs that I just discussed and they will be very evident. People will be able to come in and say, absolutely, I feel that way. Um, and if they don't, if we're really asking all these questions and they're like, no, I mean, like, no, I don't have any of those signs, then we know there's no traumatization. They still could be very changed people, right? That our, our experiences shape us and they change us throughout our lifespan, but they're not always traumatizing. So always just a really fun thing to talk about. And I, and I love helping people learn about themselves and the people around them. So if you're ever wondering like, gosh, what does that really mean? What does that mean for me? Am I traumatized? Now we can begin to assess that. And you can assess that in your own home and with your own people. And from there on, then we discuss what's the next step. And there are lots of interventions. I hope that this helps to clear up this um, ever asked question of what does trauma mean? How do I know if I'm traumatized? Um, it's more simple than you think. And there are specific things we look for. So as always, thank you for checking in with your wellness. And I'll see you soon.